Okay, here we go. <sighs> Everyone's gazes will be locked on one. Team Juness has been deployed. It's all you, Teddy. Step up my game. We are the masters of the Cub Step and the Juna Special. Teddy hits all of his one of a kind dance moves, and as the shadows cheer him on, a gentle light slowly courses over them. That really was impressive. Teddy's dance had a lot of improv improv improvisation, improvisation on it. <laughs> Ugh, as far as self expression, it was perfect. No wonder he's a popular mascot of Juness. He really is a born entertainer. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm really glad you all understood. <laughs> You're still putting up a fight with pitiful children. Shut up. You're like a broken record with that. We're not pitiful. It's you we pity for believing this is anything like a true bond. Pity? Me? But I'm perfectly happy. Everyone yearns for me after all. That's what happiness is. <laughs> you don't 
just to have the joys of truly abandoning yourself. <laughs> Ha ha ha. Hey! Get back here, damn it! Oh no, it's gone again! Just as they say, the voice's presence has faded. Once more, we are on our own. Honestly, it's a little exasperating. We've come this far, but it still won't show itself or actually have a conversation. Hmm. We did at least learn one important thing from what the voice said. We did? You mean about how Mizo Chimizu made a deal with that voice? Broadly, yes, but the terms the voice spoke of were more specific. It mentioned that the only ones who can come to this world are those who wish to do so. And from that, we can deduce something crucial. Like? I've actually been wondering about this the whole time. When we first came to this world, that voice half forced us out. Yet when we returned to save the girls of Kahneman Kitchen, the voice never attempted to drive us away. This is despite how inconvenient it would be for that voice's plans if we had rescued all four of the girls. You know, it's true. If our being here could have messed up its plans, then you'd think all it would have had to do is force us out again. Yes. From that perspective, I'd hesitate to believe that what the voice said was untrue. Actually, there's one mystery left regarding this point. D there is? The, the timing, you totally. the time when it happens? No. Excluding the members of Konamin Kitchen, all of the incidents were concentrated around midnight. What I was trying to bring to your attention is what the victims have in common. But isn't that just how the people who watched that video on the site got here? Yes, that's the first condition. But some victims fell into a coma, and some didn't, even when they were watching the video side by side. Until now, I couldn't determine what separated the two. Huh, I see your point. That is pretty weird. I mean, leaving aside Risei and the Kanamine Kitchen girls who got brought here to perform, it doesn't make sense that some fell in while others didn't if they watched the video under the same conditions. Indeed, but everything makes sense now. The victims were all people who wished to enter this world. Whoa, are you serious? What are you saying now, Dokun? There's no way anyone would want that for themselves. I can see where some people might. Even if no one wishes specifically to fall into the midnight stage, they could get there by wishing for something else. You're absolutely correct, Senpai. The condition for entering this world most likely isn't a desire to fall into the midnight stage. Rather, it's a desire in their hearts for the bonds without pain that the voice spoke of. So the ones who wanted this fake-ass bond fall into this place. Ah! That's why when we convey to the shadows about this not being a real bond, those ribbony things come whooshing off, and they sparkle away back to where they belong. I think I can understand how they feel. We were all like that once. If I hadn't met all of you, I wouldn't have been able to show anyone my true self. It's normal to want to be accepted, while still being afraid of getting hurt. Yeah. It's like my inner self is so uncool that I wouldn't want anyone else to see it. Well, your outer self isn't cool either, though. <laughs> Damn. Was that seriously necessary? Can't you see what I'm getting at? I have listened to Yosuke and Chie's, Chie's banter while I mentally sort through the information we have at hand. Who the culprit may be, the victims, the conditions for falling into this world, good. It's quite a bit of information. Alright, we should get going. We can't waste too much time. We have to express our feelings to Mizo Chimizu and bring her back with us no matter what. She knew about Yuko-san, just like we thought. If she can tell us more, then we might be able to figure out who that voice really is. As we follow the lanterns that seem to light a path forward, we eventually reach a bizarre-looking place. Are these... cherry blossoms? But what is this place? It's like a feudal lord's house from some samurai movie. <gasps> Should I be taking off my shoes? I seriously don't think that's where we are. And Teddy, you don't even wear shoes. Sumomu-san's dollhouse, Tamami-san's circus, Nozomi-san's castle, and Tomoe-san's cityscape. Piecing together what we've discovered, it seems clear that the landscape here reflects the person everyone wishes them to be. Which means... Look! 
Over there! It's Miso Chimizu! Tell me one thing. Are you Yuko Asada? Well, who knows? I'm sure you can guess the answer to that, Miso Chimizu. Hmm. I see. Miso Chimizu! Damn it, lady! I killed someone, you know. Th that was out of the blue? <laughs> I was young then. I believed in things like doing your best and living honestly, just the way you do now. Is this about Yuko Osada? That's right. I was her manager. Yuko Osada. I still clearly remember the anxiety in her face when we first met. Wow. Her manager? You must have known her well then. Yes, I remember Yuko well. She was uniquely talentless among the innumerable crowd of idols. How could you say that? It's the truth. She was immature as a performer. No better than an amateur. Just like you. How dare you! I probably said before, before Rise and stopped her from barking back at Zochimizu's words. It's okay. Now's not the time to be reproaching her. Even so, she and I worked hard. I remember how she'd always say, I want to convey to everyone how important it is to hang in there. I did everything I could to sell Yuko's name and grant her wish. I thought that if her fans took even slight encouragement from her songs, it would be worth it in the end. Miss Ochimizu. She was a hit. We both cried with joy over her success. So many fans showed up at her meet and greets that Yuko was exhausted by the end. And her concerts always sold out. Very quickly, Yuko rose to become a top idol. But around the time that song, Calistegia, was going to be released, both of us came to a realization, without noticing it. We had arrived at a destination very different, and very far from what Yuko had wanted. I see now. Those notes that we found in the dressing room. They were cries for help written by Yuko-san. Yuko-san came to that realization when she wrote the lyrics about morning glories, about Calistegia. She realized that what she most wanted to convey to her audience wasn't possible in her current position. That's why Yuko-san... That's why she was yearning for a bond. And because the song she wrote was about bonds, she changed its lyrics herself. Yuko realized that she had no bonds with anyone. The song that she wrote was no longer about the Yuko Asada that her fans imagined her as. She finally reached a point where she could convey her true feelings, but she lost the words to express them to her fans. That's awful. <laughs> but I realized something then too. Yuko's wish was never attainable from the beginning. The most diehard fans immediately turned on me. They labeled me a murderer for crushing Yuko's dream. That's horrible. No, it's fine. I am a murderer after all. I killed Yuko, so the label fits. Is right. The usual sarcasm is gone, Mr. Kimizu, and it plays her hint of madness. As the poor woman in the world cling with dangerous volatility, anger, sadness, hatred, suffering, her mind is betraying the storm of painful emotions. What the hell? Isn't she acting kind of weird? Ah! Oh. <laughs> Mr. Kimizu is happy! How wonderful! Now the self that others wish her to be, and the self that she wishes for, are in sync. What? Her bond with everyone is amazing. Here, I'll let you hear it too.